We're standing here in this magnificent stand of Lucas Berman Patasoniae. That's the silver-edged pincushion. Um, it's a local endemic pincushion that grows in the area between uh, Stanford and Cape Agulhas, just on these limestone cliffs um, and limestone soils near the coast. It really is a spectacular plant. All around us, it's in full flower, and it's one of the most beautiful um, flowering plants in the region. Um, it also has a fascinating ecology. This plant is pollinated by the endemic Cape sugarbird, which is um, endemic to the Feinbos region of the Western Cape. Okay, so what you can imagine, if you look at this plant, for us it's a beautiful flowering plant, but really what it's all about is trying to attract birds because it's bird pollinated. So the endemic Cape sugarbird flies over, sees this massive red, and it gets attracted. It comes down, it lands, strong claws grab onto the stem, and even if in the strongest wind the sugar bird's able to hang on with its strong claws and then it takes its beak and it sticks its beak down into the flower and as it sticks its beak into the flower the pollen is on top of these pin heads you can see here and the pollen gets placed onto the back of the head of the bird um, and the bird then flies off to the next flower and that's how the plants are pollinated all right i'm sitting in a gap here in this pincushion and this gap has been created by a baboon now, one of the things, the baboons, we have a lot of baboons in these landscapes, and they love pincushion seeds. And right here, where, we, where I am, there's a whole lot of broken branches, and there's a pile of pincushion flowers. And these, and what's been happening here is the baboons have been breaking them off, opening them up, and then taking the seeds from inside the flowers and devouring them. So, um, it's also important baboon food. Okay. Well, as with many of the proteas and pincushions, at the tips of the leaves are these little red spots. Um, now on this particular pincushion, there's one, two, three, four, five, normally five to seven of these little spots. And we call these extra floral nectaries, which is just a really fancy word for saying it's, it's a nectary, so it's producing nectar, but it's not in the flower. So why would that be? Um, and it's generally agreed that what's happening here is the leaf is releasing sugar from its tips in order to attract the ants. The ants are around the plant when it comes for time for taking the seeds underground. And the ants also act as kind of a burglar alarm system. So they eat other little insects that would be eating the leaf. And it's a way that the plant protects itself. And when the seed drops onto the ground at the end of the season, now in about November, um, the coating attracts, this, the, is, is full of pheromones, and those pheromones, it's like a perfume for the ants. So the ants smell this, and one ant will find a seed, and it's, the, the, the seed's too big for a single ant to pick up, so it'll go and collect a few of its mates, and you'll have four or five um, ants coming back, picking the seed up, and then carefully carrying that, slugging that um, seed back into their, into their holes. They go underground into little caverns, and then they have a feast. They eat the coating of that seed. And you can imagine it's like a reward that the pincushion is giving the ants for taking the seeds underground. So it's quite amazing. So the seed gets planted underground, the ants eat the coat off, and then the seed might wait there five, 10, 15, 20 years until a fire comes through the landscape. And we tend to think that the fa the a fire is a bad thing, but actually these plants need fire to reproduce. So what happens is the bush gets destroyed, the mother bush that we see here gets destroyed, um, the ashes land on the ground, and then with the first cold winter rain, normally in around April of the following year following the fire, the rains leach down some of those ashes, the, the, the chemicals within the ash, that activates the little seed which has been dormant, waiting all those years, and out it comes again. So everything you see across this landscape, all these pincushions were born the day of the last fire, which in this case was the 2nd of February 2006. And until the next fire, the plant's going to be making these beautiful flowers, producing these seeds. The seeds are being carried underground and they've been stored in this underground seed store. Um, it's like a seed bank until the next fire. So the ecology of this plant is really fascinating. If you took away the birds, the sugar birds, you took away the fire, you took away the ants, it can't reproduce. It needs all of those things. And without that, the plant won't be able to reproduce. And it's such an important species in the landscape because it's acting to attract the birds, it's feeding baboons, it's creating shade for other plants underneath it. So all, all of this is intricately interwoven. And something as simple as the little ant that does the um, dispersal of this plant is critical to the, to the um, ecology of the fangbox.